The assault on, on vaping uh, because they're just considered to be cigarettes. It's just really, quite frankly, for a lot of people, it's just too much, you know? I, I certainly understand that. And uh, I, I am not personally happy about where things have headed. I have looked at a number of different forms of evidence and concluded that they all combine to suggest that vaping is increasing smoking cessation. Uh, I believe this is true, certainly in the United States. I believe it's true in the UK as well. Uh, the first one is uh, some randomized controlled trials. We don't have enough of these, but we have a very prominent one by Peter Hayek and his colleagues. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine this past year. Uh, the importance of this study is they went to an English smoking cessation clinic and they took smokers who wanted to quit and didn't have any particular preference for how they did it. And they randomized them into two groups, one of which was given e-cigarettes along with counseling. The other was given nicotine replacement products along with the same kind of counseling. At the end of a year, the vapors were almost twice as likely to have quit smoking as the people who were using the governmentally authorized smoking cessation products. So that's a pretty compelling kind of piece of evidence. We have other randomized trials as well uh, some of them coming out just recently that support this basic notion. And then we have the evidence from population studies looking at what has been happening to population levels of tobacco use. And uh, in both the UK and the US, uh, there are three or four, I think, very influential papers by some of the leading scholars in the field, Robert West uh, and his colleague Emma Beard in the UK, Xu Hong Zhu in the US, both of them suggest that vaping has decreased smoking by about 10 to 15 percent in a year. Now, 10 to 15 percent isn't the answer to the problem of smoking. But in public health terms, it's a pretty significant impact. And keep in mind, this is all occurring against this backdrop of opposition to vaping in the public, in the media and in the mainstream public health field. So we're getting some, I think, pretty significant evidence from these population studies that vaping does make a difference. We have other population studies that are indicating that frequent vaping is associated with increased smoking cessation, but they found that infrequent vaping, you know, less than daily and so on, is associated with a reduced quit rate. And there are about three or four studies that have that same conclusion. That helps to explain some of the discrepant evidence on whether vaping is associated overall with quitting or not. Of course, you have to control for whether people are trying to quit. Some people may be using vaping to supplement their smoking intentionally, um, and that probably falls in more of that category of the infrequent vaping. And probably, frankly, those are people who don't like vaping, and hence it's not going to help them to quit, and they may be having trouble quitting with other methods. So then we have uh, other, other evidence, some of the, that I really enjoy as an economist myself, is research by some of my colleagues that has found that if you tax e-cigarettes or otherwise restrict the sale of e-cigarettes, you tend to see an increase in smoking. Some of these studies are referring to adult smoking, and others among them refer to kids. Uh, there's two of them, for example, that found uh, that when we first started restricting the sale of vaping products to uh, non-minors, people 18 and older, uh, you tended to see higher rates of smoking in those states that imposed those restrictions than the states that did not. So we're getting some pretty interesting evidence, I wouldn't call it compelling, but certainly very interesting evidence that restrictions on vaping lead to increased smoking. You can assume the opposite would hold as well. Next, we've got data demonstrating that smoking cessation rates have increased and that e-cigarettes are the single most widely used aid in smoking cessation attempts. And this is again true in both the UK and the US. So more smokers are using 
vaping products in their attempts to quit than they are the other government-approved cessation pharmaceuticals, nicotine replacement therapy products, uh, and anything else. Let me interrupt so you. you. Bought- Let me interrupt you there, uh, Dr. Warner, for a second. Uh, my question here is this, is that during the um, the whole scare in the fall with E-Valley, which we'll talk about coming up here, we had often uh, the parents in the parents' groups and so forth and some of the health voluntaries sitting there in the White House uh, with the president saying that there is no evidence showing that vaping is effective for smoking cessation. I just want to bring that into the conversation here because it seems to me and for, to most people that the, that the anti-vaping opponents just don't recognize that research. Well, this is a, a phenomenon in our society more generally, and that is people recognize what they want to believe. And uh, they will tend to follow the research that's consistent with their beliefs. Uh, This is actually, we've got a literature on this in the psychology field dating back uh, several decades now. But it strikes me as being especially relevant in the current era. And that's because we're living in a period when facts are no longer facts, when science doesn't matter. We've tended to discredit science. And people believe what they want to believe. And I think that's a major factor of what's going on here. We're not getting any good civil discussion between the two sides of the, if you want to call it a debate, you can call it a debate over e-cigarettes. Did you have anything more to add here except for hooray on uh, CC? (laughs) No, I mean, again, putting these pieces together, we have a couple of more pieces here. Uh, just we take a look at the fact that smoking prevalence and the sale of cigarettes have declined at an unusually rapid rate precisely during the era of vaping. I think this is especially noteworthy when we're looking at kids and young adults. If you look at the data on smoking among kids, so monitoring the future, which is a study of uh, high school and middle school kids' use of drugs of all kinds, that dates back 40 some odd years. Uh, During that period, they've covered smoking in high school seniors that entire period, and then uh, 10th and 8th graders starting in the 1990s. Uh, What we've observed is that smoking has been on the decline for the last 25 or more years. If you take a look at the period during which that decline accelerated most, it coincides perfectly with the period when vaping became popular among kids. So the first time we saw a significant percentage of kids vaping was in uh, 2014. That was the first year in which we saw a large proportion. By large, I mean bigger than about 5%. That was also the year that we saw one of the largest declines in cigarette smoking uh, prevalence in history among kids. And if you look at the entire period from then through 2019, the slope of the line has changed. The decrease that, frankly, we would have expected to slow down simply because it's getting so low, the prevalence of smoking is becoming so low among kids, has actually sped up during the period of vaping. So that's a pretty pretty compelling fact that we need to keep in mind. And then there's one other that uh, I, again, as an economist, find uh, worth considering. Um, Whenever governments are either adopting policies or even talking about them to ban or restrict flavors or, for example, ban the sale of e-cigarettes outright, which San Francisco did, Massachusetts did so temporarily, we see the share prices of the major cigarette companies rise. What is that telling us? It's telling us that the market believes that these two are substitutes for each other, that as vaping goes down, smoking will go up. And conversely, if we get vaping to increase, there's a good possibility that smoking will decline. 